we had a journalist out of Eldred who was running a regional publication and ended up dying in very unclear circumstances. Uh, that's probably two, three months back now. And as we talk today, it's not clear what investigation has gone on because there are no results to talk of. It remains an open case and uh, uh, sitting in Nairobi and, and being a member of the Editors Guild, which is a professional group that represents journalists in Kenya, uh, we don't seem to see any uh, concerted effort to find the killers of Mr. Kitui, a journalist based in Nelroot. That's one case. Second case, a, t a crew of journalists went out in uh, uh, towards the coast coastal area of Kenya to investigate complaints by a community on, uh, on on human rights abuse. And policemen were set on them and physically assaulted them. This was widely reported in Kenya. To date, not one person has been brought to account for attacking journalists who are going about their work. So yes, Going by those two cases, it, it, it is clear in my mind that impunity is very much part of us today. Many times you have to uh, give up personal liberties for the cause of your profession, if you're a journalist. The situation we have requires a, a lot more of, sac of that sacrifice today. And like every profession, the more sacrifice you require, the fewer the numbers of the professionals you find and are willing and able uh, to participate. So increasingly, we are finding that there are a huge number of journalists are happy to do, uh, you know, what I would term conveyor belt journalism, just reporting what happened, where, whom, but very, very few are willing to go into the space of uh, watchdog journalism, you know, holding public officers to account. It's becoming, uh, uh, um, many of them have to consider personal consequences for them to go into that space. Given the current trends, and as we go into 2016, whereupon uh, many uh, political actors begin preparing for elections the, the year after, Unless something comes in to totally change the game, it's, I think these trends will continue. We'll see less and less journalists able to, to stick the neck out. Because when the consequences become more personal than they are professional, uh, we all know what that does to the, to the, to the, to the class of journalists. Absolutely, it does. Uh, uh, Kenya is a part of the international community and the world increasingly is more connected than ever before. So certain international actors certainly uh, have uh, can influence what happens in the local space. Uh, whether they're willing and, they, uh, and ready to do it, I guess is a, is a different question. But it's, it's a given that uh, there the are few international actors whose, uh, whose voice will count on how we execute press freedom in this space. Uh, as the whole world knows, coming out of 207 uh, post-election violence, it may not be obvious, but the Kenyan society is very divided even today. And because of that, that division has, has gone into areas that traditionally it never went into. So that even um, media outlets are consumed and understood based on assumptions made uh, regarding their uh, uh, liking or not liking of various political persuasions. So I expect that, uh, and I guess it's a, it's, a, it's a valid expectation, that in the near future, for as long as that remains unresolved, 
uh, it's going to be very, very uh, treacherous uh, landscape for the media.